In today's video guys, we are going straight back into the engine rebuild of the Audi R8. This is part two, so if you missed part one and all the important information leading up to this point, click in the right hand corner now and go and watch that. But for now, let's jump straight back into it. So I actually left the last video with six of the eight pistons in. I have just gone ahead and fitted the last two. You didn't need to see it. You saw the process for the other six, so that was fine. And I've also just cleaned up the block surface ready for the head gaskets and the head to go on, but we will do that at a later date. I just thought I'd show you all eight pistons in. So the next thing we need to do is now talk up our conrods and answer my phone apparently as well. So I've checked that all my conrod caps are all pointing inwards like that. They all are all in the right position. So now I just need to talk all the caps up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Right, so that's all my Conrad caps um, talked up now, and you can see I've just marked each one just to know they are talked and angled. So now I'm just going to turn the engine over one last time just to double check, make sure we've got nice, smooth, all talked. Cool, looking good. Right, let's get the old uh, baffle plate on. So continuing building up the bottom of the engine, next up is the top sump, which is this part here. Uh, this part is actually fairly simple and there's only one O-ring required here, which just sits in that recess there. And then there's just a bead of silicon that goes all the way around the outside. And then we can bolt the top sump on, uh, I don't know, 15 or T30s, maybe a little bit more. So we'll put some silicon on and get that bolted on. And then we'll continue on with the oil pump, which will sit in this kind of gap here. New O-ring in there. Right now the upper sump is on, we need to get the oil pump in, so this is literally just going to sit in three bolts and we have our all important oil pump drive which I shall install through the timing case uh, cover but we'll do get the oil pump in first. So we've just got to get it in like so. So that is now fed into the gears and it's just sat there ready for the timing chain to go back together. Right, and the final piece to the bottom and the final sump. Uh, just need one little gasket to go in here. All the other gaskets are on the oil pump. You can see they sit there. So let's just get this last one in. So I'm actually going to put the sealant round here instead of round the sump on this one just because they're tighter edges around here and on the sump they're just a lot wider so I've got a lot better chance of getting it right if I do it round this one instead. So a stick a bead of coolant, bead of coolant, bead of silicon round. So with the sump on, that is now the bottom of the engine all done. So now what we've got to do is just spin it around and we'll get those heads on and yeah, let's unwrap them and take a look at them because I haven't actually seen them myself. I have left them wrapped up. Start with head numero uno. Oh, just look how good the skimmed head looks. Literally like a mirror. All the valves look beautiful as well, look. Look at that. All right, let's just have a look at the rest. Oh. So the valves have all been completely removed, new valve stem stills, um, and they've all just been completely decoked of any carbon. I don't think they've been, they might have been relapsed here, I can't remember. So if you just have a look at the back of the valves, look in there. Beautiful. 
So yeah, effectively they've been carbon cleaned, so they're all absolutely perfect. So what we'll do now is just, we'll start with this head since I got it out first, and we'll place this onto the block. I've just given the sump a little bit of a clean up because it was looking absolutely disgusting, so it looks a bit better now. So let's now just spin around. This. I think I've got to fit it. I think it'd be too much bald ache. Otherwise. Yeah, so it's a toss up whether it would be easier to fit the head first or the timing chain cover first. But ultimately I've got no way of really picking the engine up without the heads on because they've got the bracket so I can lift it up with the engine crane. Uh, so yeah, it's just gonna be easier to get the head on first and also the time chain coat, it's not too bad because this is a gasket, so there's no sealant involved here. So I won't be, because obviously you're gonna have sealant across here, it won't be too bad actually. So yeah, we'll get the heads on first and then we'll get the times uh, chains built up. Now while I've got the camshafts out, it's just going to be easy for me to talk the head to spec uh, now. I've already done the first stage of talking, which is all 10 bolts to 30 newton meters. Now I've got to do the second stage. There's four, four, there's four stages to this. Uh, the second stage is now 60 newton meters. So let's do that now. So now I've got to go over them all again and do 90 degrees and then again 90 degrees. So I'll skip ahead and do that bit. So with the left bank now on and the head all fully torqued up, we can now go ahead and fit our camshaft lifters. Now these are basically the in-between, the camshaft and the valves. So what they'll do is they'll sit on top of the valves here and sit in these little recesses and when the camshaft rotates they'll just push down on little bearings. So we'll get them fitted now and uh, get the camshafts in. So as I said this goes into that uh, recess, this part sits on top of the valve and then you've got your roller bearing here which is what the, uh, the camshaft rotates on allowing it to constantly push down the valve like that basically. Right, so preparing for the camshaft now. We want to get our assembly lube back up again. Just put in the where the camshaft's going to rest. Like so. I think we might have to change because obviously all the valves are up at the minute. So I think we need to find it. So it sits down which is probably about there because we want it to sit in the recess because we have it at TDC it's pushing one of the valves down which means the camshaft because we haven't got the carrier on it pops up so we want to rotate it so it all sits flush so it enables us to get our camshaft clamp on and then we can turn the camshafts into a TDC position so let's get the other one in and also what we need to do is these little washers, I'm not sure why, but the gap in them must, pace, uh, must face either up or down. I guess that's for when they clamp like that, you know that it's tight, because if it's facing the side it might pinch. So, there we go. And that's the uh, carrier all cleaned up. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's not far off to be fair. The underside looks very clean. Um, still a bit dirty here, but all the main dirt's actually off. It's now just more stained than anything. So yeah, I'm gonna do this same again. Uh, engine lube in the divots, uh, put my gasket back on there, put some sealant around it, and we'll get it on. Right, and there's two locking pins you're meant to use. Uh, to centralize the clamp, but I don't have them, but two eight mil bolts do exactly the same job. 
There we go, look. Exactly the same job. So now we need to get all our bolts in and do that up. Now we've just got a pair end cap plastic bungs into the end of the camshaft and to do this I'm actually going to put some silicon just run it along the inside. Now I don't have the correct tool to turn the camshaft over without obviously any chains on um, so I've just put a load of buffers in between the bolt oh no wrong size so I'm just gonna hope that I can just turn it over don't know if I don't think the valve's gonna hit a piston hope they're not so if I can just turn it over enough no they do might turn the engine over so I can get all the pistons floating. To get it into the right position. Yes. Right. Bloody hell. It's very. I'm gonna have to turn it over again. It's that tipping point is very small window. Right, I think I now might be able to get a spanner. Use a spanner to bring it back a little bit now. Just so we can get the. Trying to get the. So we have the right hand side all now fully built up apart from the rocker cover but obviously we can't put that on until we've uh, timed the engine up because none of our chains are on so yeah once all the chains are on then we can put the rocker cover on so that is the state is going to be left in for now so now i'm going to crack on with the right hand side i have taken the engine slightly off tdc at the bottom just so the pistons aren't at the top so we can rotate the camshafts again so i just need to remember to turn that back about 20 degrees so i'm going to stick on the time lapse now i'm going to build up the right left hand side to match where we're at with the left, oh, right, I don't know, left or right, either one. Right, we can now finally move on to the timing chain side of the engine. But first of all, just look how good the beader. I don't know, I just got to think about how good silicon beading looks when you squash it down. Right in there, look, look how good it looks. And here, look, I mean, look how good that beading looks there. Beautiful. Right, so I'll start off by getting the idler pulleys in and we've got three cogs here, which part of our oil pump drive as well and also um, is that AC oil AC drive as well that goes through there. So I'll get all these in position and then we'll start getting our chains and tensioners built up. 
Well, I've just had my first major panic. I just looked at that and thought, oh no, I've put the head on. Is that, is this gonna fit? But luckily look, that was a very close call. Right, so I've got the sprockets for the timing chains for the cylinder head. I'm now gonna put my spare oil pump drive in. I've just put a bead of silicon round here because it's sealing on an outside surface. So let's just get this right. So that's my spur gear all fitted and torqued up. You can hear the oil pump drive nicely in. Now we move on to the rest of the timing chains and tensions that I've got in the boxes here. Um, we've got two of these, one for each head. This is the main he uh, tensioner for the head. That sits behind there, including the gaskets as well. We've got a couple of guides here and another guide there as well for the main uh, frame there. And then we've got a few more tensioners and uh, yeah, another tensioner in there. So, uh, and all the chains. So I need to work out what chains go where and also the tensioners. So this was a bit of a faff because I had two chains which are nearly the same length, so I had to work out which one went where. And the trouble is with this, the sprockets cannot go on first. You have to put them on with the chain, otherwise they just will not fit under the head there. And that was a bit that was a pain in the ass. But eventually, once I got through that, they all went on fine. And the good thing about these two chains for the main chain there and the one that goes around the oil pump drive is they don't need to be timed or anything. They are just a link chain and the oil pump is just a drive. It doesn't need to be uh, timed up or anything. So they were really easy to do. And you you can just pull the uh, pin for the tensioners and they are done straight away. So eventually I have all my chains on and what a pain in the ass. Like it is impossible to fit like a, a guide without fitting the chain. So the amount of things I fitted and had to take them back off again. Um, yeah, it's just an absolute pain in the ass. But I've got them all on in the end. Um, I have already taught or taken the pins out of the tensioners for the spur drive, the oil pump drive and the other chain at the back here, which all that actually does is just connect both heads to the crank so they don't need to be timed you can just pull the pins out on those um uh what we got here so actually i don't need to time anything at the top here at the minute either because i've already locked my camshafts in tdc my cranks already in tdc as well so i'm at the point where i can just pull these pins out he says like that which no Right, so that is all the chain tensioners now done. Um, these bolts are not tight because we have to now uh, put some torque on the inlets to be able to do the bolts up. I think that just takes all the tension, um, all the pre-tension out of the chain. So um, obviously here, there would be, just be slightly slack on this side. So by taking the, uh, by tensioning the inlet here, we're just taking all the slack, any slack at all out of this side of the circuit and then we can do the bolts up. Um, there is a special tool that you need to fit over here because you're gonna put a tool over here, put 40 Newton meters of torque on here to really torque the chain and then do these bolts up. I don't have that tool. However, I have found an oil filter wrench which perfectly fits over there so I can <laughs> put some pressure on, obviously I'm gonna have to roughly guess what 40 Newton meters, but I know what 40 Newton meters is. So I can do that and then do these bolts up. Basically, just pull that. Yeah, it's got to be forty newton meters. So, what you reckon forty newton meters is? So, just do it. Just do it fairly tight. As tight as you can do it, really. Yeah. Yeah. Hold it. Hold it. So. 
네. 네. That's it. Thank you very much. Right, that should be the engine now timed up. Obviously, the uh, camshaft bolts we've got to do up tighter, but 60 newton meters is what they're at, and that just holds them there while we can turn the engine over and check the timing. So, fingers crossed, it's all good because I remember the RS4, I had a lot of issues with the timing with one of the banks. They kept turning back, and I can't remember the outcome for it, but it's just done a similar thing on this one as well. So I need to try and remember what the problem was there. Anyway, let's turn it over and see if we're timed up. Right, so yeah, two revolutions of the engine, all lining back up, fine on the left one. The right one sprung, sprung back about four or five mil, which it did on the RS4. I'm gonna go back and look, uh, watch the videos to see if I explained why it did that, because I can't remember, and I can't remember if it was anything to worry about or not. But anyway, we are, this, it'll be a minor problem if it is. Um, that is the engine all timed up, and that is gonna be it for today's video, guys. Uh, quite a lot of progress been made. The only thing we've got to really do now to get the engine like back to a complete engine is get the timing chain covers back on uh, for those three pieces there, oil filter housing, and then we can get the RA in and start putting the ancillaries back on and getting it back into the car. So as always guys, please do subscribe if you haven't already. And also follow me on Instagram at saving underscore salvage. And yeah, let me know what you thought of today's video. Um, the next video is going to be the GT4. So have a good rest of the weekend guys and I'll see you next week. Cheers guys.